Every time our athletes walk into this weight room, they're going to be pushed to the max. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! The barbell hasn't changed in over 100 years. I can take a, a 25 pound plate, and we'll go out on the turf, and I'll, I'll have you hating life. We talk about straining your gut, pushing past that comfort level. I want a lot of energy. What better breeding ground is there for being a success in life than the weight room? Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Game Talk Talk. I'm your host, Ron McKeefrey, and this is episode number 239. I want to thank you guys for listening each week. Really appreciate those of you that like, share, and comment as it helps me to continue to help as many coaches as I possibly can. Also want to thank our sponsors and specifically Jim Aware for sponsoring this episode. Uh, I only partner with companies I believe in and, and Jim Aware, just some fantastic people uh, doing great things and uh, applicable to our conversation today. This week, I'm joined by Justin Rothings, chauffeur, and uh, Devin McC uh, McConnell. Um, you know, both strength coaches. Devin's at UMass Lowell. Uh, Justin's at the San Diego Goals. Um, but they recently partnered up on writing a book uh, called Intent, and it really gets into uh, a lot of the questions that are going around in our in our in our profession about uh, sports science and. Uh, how we can apply it to our everyday situation. So I'm super excited to have you guys on the show, man. Hey, thanks a lot for having us. Thanks for having the time, Rob. I know this is a little bit different with having two people on, which is great. Uh, but you know, I always ask. You know, I always like to ask a question just because it's something I think young coaches need to hear. That you know, you don't get to San Diego, you don't get to UMass Lowell, you don't go through Stanford or you know, any of the stops along the way without a, a journey. In, in front of that, you know, and so rather than get into your, you know, your life story, give me which experience in your journey best defines you as a coach and why? I think for me, um, the biggest thing was uh, the time that I spent at, uh, at the University of Louisville and uh, I spent two and a half years there and um, the first, uh, first year as a, uh, professional intern in the second year and a half uh, as a graduate assistant and the reason I say that was it actually got me out of the, the hockey world which um, at the time was really scary because that was what I knew I wanted to do uh, was be in the hockey world and um, but it got me to open it, it opened up my eyes to uh, a completely new way of training and that's really what got me turned on to uh, all the technology because they were so ahead of the curve and, and ahead of the times and the program that Tina Murray ran there um, was really a, a breaking ground on a lot of the GPS, a lot of the heart rate, a lot of the um, bar velocity uh, uh, metrics, um, kind of getting into uh, honestly a little bit of what we're going to talk about today within the subject of uh, questionnaires and trying to find readiness scores utilizing MHRV. Um, it, it, it really, like I said, created a foundation for me that allowed me to uh, broaden my mind and my um, my education from a practical standpoint on uh, on that use of technology. Yeah, great. Tina's probably she's definitely in the top five if she's not the best, you know, strength coach out there. I don't know who is. I mean, she does a fantastic job uh, organizing her department for sure. I mean, without a doubt, I, I, like I told you, it's definitely the, uh, the biggest instrumental uh, move of my career and uh, helped get me to, uh, to where I am today. Devin, what about you? Yeah, I mean, every stop along the way, right, is, uh, I've learned a ton and there's been huge, uh, huge influences everywhere I've been. Um, the start of my career was at, at Mike Boyle Strength and Conditioning and as an intern and then coming back to work a little bit before I went on to work at Stanford and, and now UMass Lowell and probably, you know, my first, my first kind of experience in strength and conditioning and working for, for coach Boyle uh, really just opened my eyes to the importance of, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of bedrock foundations for me, you know, um, really caring about the, the, the people that you're, you're working with, caring about your athletes as a, as an absolute, uh, uh, you know, foundation, um, it, being a lifelong learner and, and the importance of, of continuously, asking questions and, and, and not being satisfied with just, you know, what you've done in the past. Uh, those are all things that I, I really learned and were ingrained in me early on uh, at MBSC. And then, you know, moving on to Stanford uh, again from the, as Justin kind of talked about on the, on the tech side, which is where we'll, we'll kind of go today was where I was first sort of um, 
uh, started to be influenced by some of the, the, that stuff and, and learned about and started to utilize some of those things working for, for, uh, you know, Brandon Marcello and, and a uh, really bright mind in the field. And, and so those experiences for me have been, uh, you know, absolute catalyst for me in, in my career. Sure. Well, Devin, what, you know, and you don't go through those stops without making some mistakes along the way. What, what's one of the biggest mistakes you made and why? Yeah. I mean, I mean it, I learned from it. yeah, I, I think, uh, probably the biggest mistake I've made and, and, I, maybe I'm not too smart because I always find myself making the mistake again and having to, you know, back myself up. But overcomplicating things, overcomplicating things is a huge mistake. And and uh, I think because I'm so eager always to learn and to to progress and to to find a, a better way, um, I can, you know, certainly can can let that, you know, run away a little bit. And and I find myself having to slow down a little bit from time to time and say, hey, you know what? Um, this is a little too complicated. Let's back it up. Let's stick, stick with the basics. So that's probably one of the biggest things that, um, in my career that I've, that I've learned, I continue to learn, uh, and, and is a, is a challenge for me just because I'm always, I'm always trying to push the envelope a little bit, but sometimes, uh, slowing down and, and paying attention to uh, the basics is, is a, a really valuable lesson. Yeah, absolutely. Justin. I think the, uh, I think the biggest thing is trying to, um, find the answers all the time. Uh, not being okay um, with just accepting things that that maybe just is how it is. Um, we're working with humans and not robots. Um, and a lot of times we're working with uh, kids from the ages of, I say kids, but uh, young men uh, and women from the ages of 18 to, uh, in my case, uh, 40. And, um, there's a lot of things going on in those people's lives um, besides sport, although um, at the professional level, it is what they do. Um, but there's a lot of things going on, um, both uh, uh, on the family side and from a uh, stress side um, in ways that we don't even understand, uh, whether they're at the rink or the field or the pitch or wherever they're at. Um, there's a lot going on. It's a very loaded question that we really have to kind of accept and identify that um, them coming and seeing us is uh, is not the biggest part of their day, potentially. Whereas for us, it might be, and uh, uh, that's I think the biggest thing is is accepting uh, or understanding that there's other reasons why certain things are happening, and uh, and really that um, that led us to let Devin and I to um, really kind of build um, what we have today in. Uh, in what we call intent, and I'm kind of jumping the gun here, but um, it, it it allowed us to, like Devin said, simplify things and um, kind of eliminate some of that error that you might find of of trying to dig into the numbers. You say, why is this happening? Why is this happening? I have to have a uh, an end result and be able to um, have a conclusion from from something which which just might not be possible. Yeah, we, you guys have alluded to it a couple of times with the with the book, and you know I'm a firm believer as strength and conditioning coaches that every one of us have a book in us, you know, on, on something. And and on a lot of ways, I feel almost that we're we're obligated because we're such a, a young profession that we have to we have the responsibility to put that stuff down on paper so future generations can read and 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 follow the you know chronicle. The, the development of our profession, you know, and so I, I want to first congratulate you guys on putting pen to paper and, you know, coming up with a great resource for coaches and, and, and a resource for our, our profession. But I also want to dig into it and just kind of find out what were some of the motivations, you know, you know behind the book. Why, why, you know, why tackle this in the first place? Yeah, I think the, uh, the backstory is kind of basically it, it took us about a year to, to kind of put the whole thing together, but it, it started, Justin and I both were, were speaking at the, an NSCA clinic uh, out in Colorado Springs and more or less we're talking about some of the same stuff uh, from a sports science standpoint and how we utilize that in our programs. And we, we got to talking afterwards and said, you know what, we've sort of organically come to a lot of the same conclusions and do some of the same stuff. And we're also getting the same questions from people. Every time we'll speak about these things, we get the same questions from the audience. Um, okay, I have this information or I have this tool. What, what do I do with it? And we both said, well, you know, we've, we've kind of been doing this for the last, you know, 10 or 12 years. Um, why don't we put some of this down on paper and, and maybe we can help some other people not make all the mistakes that we made. And that's kind of the backstory of the book. And, and 
um, why we decided to kind of tackle this. Because like you said, I think you're right. I think all of us have a story. We have, have a, a book in us. Um, but Justin and I kind of found that uh, we had a lot of the same experiences and, and we thought we could share some of that, um, that wisdom, I guess, just for making a lot of mistakes over the last decade. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I think sometimes, I mean, that's, you know, that's what you run into when we talk specifically technology is, um, or strength and conditioning for that matter, where everything look, is a tool. And unless you know how to utilize the tool and appreciate the tool and respect the tool, it doesn't really have a place for for you and your program. And you know, this time of year when, you know, you know, combine prep is going and there's all these exciting exercises you know, people just look and see and then they throw it in the program and they fail because they don't really understand the, the why behind it or the, the principles behind it. And so I think, um, you know, I would assume that's how you guys kind of came to the, the conclusion with, with intent that, that, you know, there's, there's not a system that really exists um, for, these, for these coaches to take these tools, these technology pieces of, you know, these uh, pieces of technology tools and apply them to their situation. So what, I mean, what, what was the, what were some of the biggest questions that you received? And then, you know, what, you know, what were some of those answers to uh, a lack of a system and things along along those lines? For sure. So a lot of times um, it got into actual specifics of certain pieces of technology and it was always different. So for heart rate or GPS, it was always, okay, so, uh, what do you want their heart rate to get to on a given day or what what at what point does their uh, when their heart rate hits a certain area it should we shut them down or um, how much uh, distance is usually being covered in the sport of basketball or football or hockey um, and so it really started to like get uh, I, I really start to understand you know what like people honestly get overwhelmed with a lot of this. They, they, they don't know what, it, what they're looking at or, or really what the tool is all about because uh, Devin and I were um, getting uh, individual practice loading for individual drills and uh, within our system we were, we were creating, our coaches were using that to program their practices, making sure that um, overall loading per day was where it needed to be in, in the big picture. Um, from a velocity standpoint, um, obviously, uh, Brian Mann's done a phenomenal job in um, getting information out there and started to clear that muddy water. But um, even trying to look at a readiness score for the day and say, okay, well, how do I know where their bar velocity needs to be based upon their readiness for the day? How do I um, make changes on the go to a program that I already have done? Um, how do I um, know that I'm actually getting the stimulus out of the player that we need. Um, a, lot of, a lot of information came down to actually trusting what was going on. And um, people quite often didn't trust themselves uh, based upon their conclusions. And a lot of that stemmed from uh, not having enough experience with it, not having enough information out there about it. Um, because honestly, the, what, what I think happened was people get this tool or these series of tools, and it's all exciting. You're either at a trade show or at a conference, or um, you heard about it from another colleague, or you saw it um, through some type of social media feed, and you started to look into it. You got all excited. You saw it on, on the web. It kind of outlined how you use it what, it, what features it has. And then all of a sudden, it's sitting there in your lap, and the user or the person running it is now you. and it's like, oh my God, what has happened? And you don't know where to go from there. And that's, I think, what Devin and I got so continually and so often. And um, from our presentations, we were just like, you know what? There's a real need to help educate and, and, and simplify. Devin touched on this term already. Simplify this complicated and convoluted world of... Um, technology and sports uh, and strength and conditioning because at the end of the day it it has to be kept simple because if it's not it, it it's over complicated and implementing it in a team setting um, even in a personal training private setting becomes so incredibly difficult yeah I couldn't agree with you more I think even traveling the world where some you know some 
around the world that may be even better at implementing and letting technology or science drive practice and, and, and training you know, than even us in the U.S., but they still have the same questions, you know, what we should be looking for and what's, what's that minimum effective dose and, uh, of technology or tools or whatever. You guys obviously see the pain point there and, 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 and have, you know, come up with a solution, you know, a solution. What, what, what is the, what is the answer? What's the system? What, what, you know, should we be looking at, you know, um, a battery of physical tests with some readiness, you know, information with some recovery information or what, 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 what should we be going and, and, and tracking at this point? Well, we've actually developed a software system uh, that takes, takes our book, takes intent, what we've outlined um, from building a holistic system and basically put that into a, a cloud-based software system that um, is, again, really simplifies the process of um, understanding basic readiness data, uh, things as simple as, it could be as simple as resting heart rate, um, a vertical jump test for power output, you know, ner central nervous system output, um, subjective questionnaire. And basically, you, you, what happens is the, the individual, the athlete, plugs that basic data in and uh, with our algorithms, it spits out and says, okay, th this is what you should do based on the tools that you have. If you have bar velocity tools, that you've got uh, heart rate tools, uh, these are the speed zones that you should stay in because today you're firing on all cylinders or today you're a little bit, a uh, little sluggish. We need to back off, keep your heart rate in this area for most of, most of practice or most of training. So um, basically what we've done is taken that, that, idea out of the book uh, and put it into a software-based system called Intent that really, again, tries to simplify that for coaches so that they don't have to get bogged down with all the minutiae and the details of every single data point and what do I look at. Uh, now it's really simplified um, and it's, it, it's, uh, it, it's an easy sort of plug and play system that allows people to get to work with the, the, the real work of coaching and, and not be bogged down by all the data. Yeah, that's something that, you know, obviously becomes the, the, the problem is that if you allow it to be intrusive, uh, it takes away from the coaching or the you know, the art of coaching or th things along those lines. Let's let's back up just a minute and talk a little bit about what that holistic system looks like. What sh what should we be looking at? So I think quite often uh, another question that Devin and I got asked all the time is, well, I just bought a heart monitoring system. How is this going to? How is this going to cover every aspect of things that I'm looking at? Um, and Dev and I, I both agree, and I think uh, a lot of others would agree as well, is there's not one piece of technology, there's not one item that is going to be your end-all answer. You, you can't get a Tendo or a Jim or a unit and say, okay, this is going to change and be utilized for every single thing that I do in the weight room um, or um, everything that I... Uh, uh, am doing from a heart rate monitoring or uh, it is going to take over everything that you have to look at every single aspect because our bodies are made up of uh, both our, our brain and our central nervous system and then our uh, peripheral nervous system, uh, the utilization of our muscles. So there is you have to you have to take that into consideration and identify as many different tools as you can from a resting heart rate to a uh, HRV score to a subjective questionnaire because sometimes the subjective questionnaire is the most important information that you're getting because it's how the athlete perceives themselves. Right. And at the at the end of the day, it's all about perception. If an athlete feels like they cannot do something on a given day, that very mel very well may be true, no matter what other data is telling us they may just feel that way because like I said, they have lives outside things that are going on that may be affecting them. So there's, um, there's that aspect. There's the hydrational aspect. There's the nutritional aspect. There's, um, how, uh, uh, their, their, uh, their central nervous system in terms of reaction, how, how well are they, um, primed and ready to go? Or is there some residual fatigue sitting there that we have to adjust for on the day? Did we just come from a heavy lower body day? Well, we're probably going to have some type of residual effect <laughs> over the next couple of days that is going to prevent um, optimal performance. 
so so that's all that's kind of the holistic system we're looking at uh from an overall standpoint that there's not just one direction we have to dive into we have to pull in from from a series of others yeah i think that uh, you know i agree with that you mentioned um earlier with the trust factor you know and and the coaches buying in and uh athletes buying in and then you buying into the technology with so much technology being algorithm based um you know you have an opportunity there for that algorithm to be off you have an opportunity for the the process to not be fully um um followed by the athlete or by the coach um what how do you how do you protect against that trust factor uh, in what you're doing and and um and, and knowing that it's it's giving you a, an appropriate response i think we've we've used it for so long and um have seen it with uh, a variety of athletes a variety of ages of athletes um a variety of sports and um have become really comfortable with with the data that we see um and it's um given us continual consistencies and uh with an accuracy that we um agree with so um where where this like i said where this uh where this trust comes from is us knowing and being able to see from an athlete what's going on in the moment because maybe we're working with a larger team we're not able to make that that change right away but the next day they come back man i needed that day i need i needed to be able to um i needed that recovery ride instead of uh the tempos or the intervals that we had uh we had going or um i needed that later lower body day to be able to really get my legs back under me today and I, now i'm flying and uh hitting prs or um having peak performances on a on a friday or a saturday after um uh, an altered tuesday uh so that there's so there's things and experiences and um moments that have really um created validation within it within practical experience but also um the continual feedback and the utilization and development of this over the last uh th three or four years of the system um uh and, and using it in our own field that that has really helped change it. I think a lot of coaches, you know, uh, give the, um, you know, the response when talking about trying to implement technology into their programs that, you know, they don't want to either reward the athlete for bad decisions outside of the weight room by reducing training or, um, or are concerned about the, you know, the, you know, the, the, how the data was collected, you know, or the algorithm or whatever. What is your guys' recommendation on how to handle, you know, let's say an athlete's been good all week and all of a sudden they come in bad and it's, you know, do you, are you cutting training that day or are you going to slow play it? Or are you going to, uh, or are you going to, you know, let it go a day or two before you make an adjustment? Honestly, what a lot of it, and it sounds unfortunate sometimes, but it really depends on the athlete. That you you're you're going to start to understand um, your athletes, and this is where this is where I said right at the very beginning that we're not working with robots, we're working with people. And you, uh, I don't care what piece of technology you have, I don't care how great the system is, if you cannot have the art of coaching, if you're not, don't treat everybody as a person. Um, and know that you're working with people, um, you, you're, pro you're probably going to fail because uh, at the end of the day, um, uh, great people make a great, uh, make a, uh, great product. And uh, that's really what it's all about is understanding your athletes, understanding your coaches. Um, so, so to answer your question, it really depends on, uh, on the athlete. There, there's certain uh, athletes that will come in and try and, cut corners every now and then um, obviously depending on your culture and how that's set in um, but th there's kids that you kind of have to drag really good performance out of and then there's other um, athletes who are very intrinsically motivated that um, want to give you their best foot forward every single day and that's uh, uh, that's really going to be the ultimate deciding factor on it is 
who are you working with? What athlete is uh, are you working with, and what needs to uh, uh, to be done? Because uh, if you have a guy that is running hot, is very in intrinsically motivated, is always ready to go, and you're usually having to pull the reins back on him, and he comes in and he's like, "Man, I'm 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 in one today." <laughs> that that tells you something. But then if you have another athlete that comes in and tells you they're in one three days a week, well, there's something else going on there. Right. Right. You know, with the book, you know, what do you hope, you know, happens? What do you, what do you want coaches to get out of it? What do you, what, what's the, the action that you want them to take? The biggest thing with the book is that we want to educate coaches. We want to educate uh, both strength coaches um, and, and sport coaches for that matter. Um, and, and, and arm our, uh, our strength and conditioning coaches within our field with information of how to uh, actually affect your program on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if you're just gathering technology or if you're just gathering data on a day-to-day -day basis and it's not having an actual impact on day-to-day -day, um, decisions in your, uh, uh, within your sports and within your team setting, what is the purpose of it? If, if you're continually, um, gathering data and uh, maybe doing everything the right way, but um, your coach doesn't, has no idea that you're doing it or your players have no idea that you're doing it. Again, I, uh, what is the exact purpose of it? Um, I believe it needs to have, I, th I believe it needs to be again, holistic in nature where everything that's going on on the playing field, everything that's going on um, in the weight room, everything that's going on in uh, an athlete's free time, whether that's through, uh, through the college setting and, and, and in school or the professional setting and in their pr uh, private lives, that it has some type of effect on decisions that are made. It, it doesn't have to run everything. I, I understand that depending on your coach and who you're at, there's certain buy-in, certain levels, um, certain things that um, they're going to like that they're not going to like, but it can still be an added benefit to assist them in making decisions that they do. And, um, uh, from a day-to-day -day basis, I think uh, what our book wants to do is, is educate and um, provide a system and confidence within that system to be able to go to athletes, go to coaches, um, and, uh, uh, and talk educatedly and confidently about what you are collecting or what you're seeing as a strength coach and have them applied to that day-to-day -day nature, both in the weight room and on the, uh, uh, on the field of play. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, man, we end a show with some resources, and it looks like we had a little bit of technical difficulties with Devin, but give us your piece, your, your best piece of coaching advice you ever received. Uh, honestly, it's, it's make yourself as, um, as well-rounded as possible. Do not pigeonhole yourself. Allow yourself to, be, uh, to see every opportunity, whether it's a failure or a success, as a, uh, a moment of growth and a moment of learning. Um, nothing that happens to you is, uh, uh, is what ultimately defines you. There's not one moment that you're like, oh, yeah, I've, I can't do that anymore. I'm a failure. Everything is a learning opportunity. Everything is a, uh, every failure or success is an opportunity to grow. And um, I think resiliency is, is the biggest word um, because in our field, um, whether you're, in the pro setting or the college setting, um, every, everybody is expendable and, um, there's, uh, uh, there's, there's something to be said for that resiliency. And no matter how many times you're said no to, or how many times you're, um, uh, you're hired, you're fired, you're, uh, something doesn't work or turn out the way that you wanted it everything is going to lead you to another opportunity. And the more marketable you can make yourself, the more uh, passionate you can be about what you do, uh, the, the greater the next opportunity is going to be, is going to become because windows close all the time, but those windows often lead to bigger, bigger doors. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Give us a uh, book app and website recommendation. Uh, honestly, the biggest one um, that I've just been, I just finished reading actually, um, is I'll hold it up here. I'll give a little plug. It's called the happiness project. Yes. And, uh, 
it's it, it, it's it's something that's really defined my life and changed my life in the way that I uh, the perspective in which the way I see things and quite often within our field as well we're um, we're expected to be um, the uh, first ones at the facility and the last ones to leave and um, expect it, it, certain certain things are just expected and within the happiness project it really takes allows us to take control of our own lives and uh, and our own happiness actually and um, to fill it with what makes us happy on a day-to-day -day basis and by embracing um, everything that happens to us and it changed it really changed my perspective on um, the day-to-day -day operations of, of everything and my then honestly day-to-day -day choices and so the the happiness project was uh, and the way it's set up it's really cool it uh, it gives you some actionary steps um, uh, 12 actionary steps so it gives you one step every single month uh, to work through um, and a goal and uh, and it was just it, it was really uh, instrumental in changing the my outlook and uh, um, uh, the way that I felt about uh, uh, day to day life really and, and and was able to find find overall happiness and everything well that's awesome uh, an app and a website uh, honestly it, the app that I've been just all over lately has been i don't know if you've heard of Jaku um, but it's a it's a timing device that uh, it's a little wrist unit and uh, their app uh, utilizes uh, sensory movement so um, you have this little wrist unit on and um, when you hit start uh, your athlete is obviously in a stop position and the first motion that they make it starts the uh, starts the clock and then there's a camera that catches them at the moment that they cross through that uh, that beam and it and it gives you a uh, uh, a time so if you're measuring a 10 yard sprint if you're measuring a 5105 if you're measuring a 40 yard sprint if you're um, using it on the ice on the court uh, whatever uh, if you're wanting to measure uh, reaction ability of uh, of a quarterback um, you can hit start at the moment it hears a beep how fast uh, he delivers the ball it gives you reaction time there um, it, so it's it's actually kind of neat in terms of uh, how it works yeah have to check that, then, one out. that one yeah jaku j a w k u and then um, the uh, the website is definitely uh, a place that I've um, pulled a lot of really good resource from. Um, has been uh, hockeystrengthconditioning.com. Just uh, the the quality of information that they put up there, um, the uh, uh, the variance, although it is called hockeystrengthconditioning.com, um, there there's a lot of very highly educated uh, coaches that are involved there and, uh, uh, the information stems, um, uh, and, and the, the topics stem right across the board. So it's, uh, it's definitely a great resource. Well, that's some good ones, man. Well, like I said in the, in the beginning, um, you know, I really, uh, I'm a big fan of anybody that, uh, puts down, puts the, the incredible amount of time that goes into producing a resource, whether it be a podcast, a book, uh, articles or, or whatever it may be. But I think as coaches, we have an obligation to do that and um, really, really respect what you guys have done, uh, putting out a great resource, putting out a, a, you know, a system and a process that, that may work for many or, or it'd be something that could be refined for somebody in their own personal situation. But, um, but you guys doing that is, is big time and, and uh, really appreciate that from all of us that, that are listening uh, to this episode as well as myself is just somebody that tries to do the same thing. So thanks so much, man. No, thank you so much for having us on. It was, uh, uh, the, the platform that you give coaches is, uh, uh, is exemplary and, uh, it's, it's great that you do, uh, you do this and the information is fantastic. I listened to, I think I've listened to 238 of your episodes. So, um, <laughs> it's been, uh, it, it's always great. And, uh, the people you have on, the way you run it, what you've brought to the field um, has been uh, has been uh, top notch. So uh, it's it's a pleasure to be on. Appreciate that. Quick, yeah, you know, quick before we go, where can people go to get the book, and where can they go for the uh, software? 
absolutely. So our books actually on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, it's available on uh, iBooks and Kindle. Um, if you want a, uh, 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 not a soft cover version, but a but an ebook. Um, and so any of those areas can get it there. Um, and then the uh, the software uh, is intent-us.com, and uh, all the information is there as well um, on uh, uh, on how to uh, uh, contact Evan and I. Um, on there's a couple links to to Amazon on there, and then uh, as well as the software. So uh, that's intent-us.com, and then the book can be found at any major retailer that uh, that you're looking at, both in uh, soft cover and ebook. Awesome, man. Appreciate you guys. No, thank you so much. Uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's a privilege to be on here, and uh, thank you for everything you do as well. That's it for this episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk. Thanks to this week's guest as well as our sponsors for bringing this episode to you for free. Make sure to check out ronmckeefree.com where you can join our mailing list, find the show notes, including all the links and resources mentioned, and information about Coach McKeefree's other products. While you are there, please join Coach McKeefree in the comments section thanking our guest for sharing. If you haven't subscribed to Iron Game Chalk Talk on YouTube or iTunes yet, make sure to do so. Comments, ratings, and reviews are always welcome. Coach McKeefree can be found on Twitter at rmckeefree on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash Ron dot McKeefer. That's it for this week. Be sure to check back next week for another great episode of Iron Game Shop Talk.